Everyone, how's it going? Today, it's my pleasure to bring you a detailed, in-depth look at the 2014 Lamborghini Aventador LP 720-4 50th anniversary. And this is going to be a full, in-depth review of the Aventador. We'll start it up so the engine, get an exhaust quick over the performance data, take it on a test drive, and show you a bunch of the unique aspects of the interior as well as exterior. And before we begin, I'd like to extend a big thanks to Lamborghini Carolinas of Greensboro, North Carolina for allowing me to come out as well as a special shout out to Lamborghini Master Technician John Hooper for assisting with the awesome drive shots with the 2014 Aventador LP 720-4 50th Anniversario. And so, without further ado, let's go ahead and start her up, let her run. The unique exterior color is specific to this model only. It's a bright metallic yellow known as Giallo Maggio. All in an equally unique two-tone leather interior of Giallo Quercus Sportivo. Diamond quilted pattern for the 50th Anniversario across the doors, seats, rear bulkhead, and headliner. Not to mention Giallo and narrow color accent stitching. Now the event door does come standard with remote push button ignition. All you have to do is just put your foot on the brake, flip open the little red cap in the center console, and hit the button to start. Beautiful sound. Now the Aventador has a standard dual mode exhaust system with bypass valves located in the exhaust pipes to open up at a certain RPM and allow a lot more of a pronounced sound. Now there's also a new exhaust tuning kit for the Aventador, this particular one has it, so when you switch it into sport mode it automatically opens up constantly rather than being restricted to the RPM. Now we'll go ahead and switch on over to sport mode and you'll instantly hear the deeper more pronounced sound. The Lamborghini Aventador features electro-hydraulic speed proportional rack and pinion power steering and a unique three-spoke leather wrap steering wheel with heavy grips up top and a flat bottom race inspired design. Satin aluminum comes across the spokes with your multifunction controls side to side. As far as the gearbox, the Aventador debuts an all-new transmission for Lamborghini known as ISR or Independent Shifting Rod. It's a single clutch 7 speed automated manual gearbox that's not only said to be lighter than a dual clutch setup at around 154 pounds, approximately half the weight of a dual clutch gearbox, but it also retains lightning fast shift times as low as 50 milliseconds. In comparison, F1 cars usually have 40 millisecond shifts. It does this by prepping the gears around the one that you're currently in. In other words, it simultaneously disengages one gear while engaging the next by using twin shafts and four carbon synchros. Shifting times blow the previous E-gear offerings out of the water when you compare the Murcielago, which retained about 200 millisecond shifts, and the Gallardo Superleggera, which took 120 milliseconds to change gears. Launch control is also standard. Once you put the vehicle in reverse, your backup camera automatically appears in your LCD display, also with guidance lines that automatically adjust as you turn the wheel. And some of that flip 
up on the automatic headlamps, rear fog lamps, as well as the hazards. Naturally, both the windows are fully automatic. And we're gonna check out the exterior, shall we? It's been just a couple of years now since Lamborghini's all-new flagship, the Aventador first made its appearance at the 2012 Geneva Motor Show and hit the streets later that year. Named after a Spanish fighting bull, the Aventador is not only the largest car the brand has ever produced, but it's also the quickest, most responsive and refined automobile in the company's history. Starting from a clean sheet of paper, the Aventador was completely designed by Lamborghini at Santa Agata Bolognese in Bologna, Italy. The striking design evokes Lamborghini's newest design language, seen in the Robenton and Siesta Elemento concepts, with sharp lines and plenty of geometric shapes. It's unlike anything else on the road. The new 50 Anniversario, limited to just 100 units worldwide, is a celebration of 50 years of Lamborghini. It features a signature color known as Giallo Maggio, or May Yellow, and was made as a tribute to yellow being the preferred color for customers since the Miria. Its name pays homage to the founding of Automobili Lamborghini in May of 1963. Only available in this model, the glittering paint contrasts amazingly well with the matte black lower clips, with hand-laid carbon composite 50 tags embedded in the rear. Of course, any other colors are also available through the Ad Personum customization program. It takes aggression and aerodynamics to a whole new level with exclusive aero packages with large, wider air intakes that help feed air to the brakes, overhangs, front splitter, and special side sills along with the rear getting its own massive diffuser with expansive black meshwork. Not to mention, the rear bonnet covers also feature exposed carbon fiber louvers rather than the clear glass on the standard car. All in all, it increases aerodynamic efficiency by 50%. And along with upgraded engine software, the 50th Anniversario also makes 20 more horsepower than the standard Aventador, hence LP720. The Aventador takes carbon fiber construction to a whole new level for the brand, significantly increasing its overall stiffness when compared to the welded steel tube chassis of the Murcielago. The standard structure is composed of a one-piece carbon fiber monocoque that starts life out as multiple sections of carbon fiber cloth that's precisely cut using a computer numerical control or CNC-guided ultrasonic knife. Once the sections are cut, by a process known as resin transfer molding, they're laid by hand into large molds and baked in autoclaves till they're properly cured. Other sections of the monocoque are then added to the top and bottom sections before both halves are joined together, creating the one-piece monocoque with a full-height rear bulkhead and roof. The benefit of this design is superior torsional stiffness and weight saving. All in all, the chassis boasts torsional rigidity of 35,000 newton meters, or 25,815 pound-feet per degree of twist. That's an astonishing improvement of 150% over the chassis stiffness of the Murcielago and weighs just a hair under 325 pounds. Once assembled, the aluminum subframes are then bolted to the front and rear of the monocoque. Aluminum is both lighter and stronger than traditional steel components. By attaching the subframes and crash structures in this manner, it allows for easier replacing and repairing of parts in case of an accident. In terms of weight savings, we refer to the body in white, which is the core assembled chassis and subframes before moving parts, fenders, paint, and accessories have been applied. The core structure weighs as little as 504.9 pounds, which is 30% lighter than the Murcielago, and only 22 pounds heavier than the lightweight Murcielago SV. As far as the body, it's a combination of carbon fiber reinforced plastics and aluminum panels. Rather than making it all of carbon fiber, which is a definite cost saving while still giving some of the weight saving measures that you would find with carbon fiber. As I touched on earlier, the Aventador also employs a new 7-speed automated manual gearbox dubbed ISR but what it also has is an all-new permanent all-wheel drive system. The latest Haldex 4 clutch pack is housed in the transaxle, along with the ISR gearbox and a power takeoff unit. It replaces the viscous coupling center differential found in the Murcielago. The Haldex unit features an electronically controlled multi-plate clutch that distributes torque between two drive shafts positioned right of the car's center line. These drive shafts then send respective torque to the rear limited slip differential and to the front open differential through a Haldex coupling. Weight distribution is 42.5% in front and 57.5% in the rear. The ISR's three driving modes also help make the best of the all-wheel drive system. With three main modes, Strata, Sport, and Corsa, various vehicle systems are altered to enhance drivability, performance, and handling. Strata is the typical road-going mode that has the smoothest shift settings, lightest steering, and full innervation of the stability control system. Sport and Corsa respectively increase steering firmness, decrease innervation of the stability control, create a more rear wheel torque bias up to 80% to the rear and Corsa, as well as quicken and sharpen gear changes. 
The ESC system also creates a brake-based torque vectoring system to help sharp turn-ins. The Aventador also employs an innovative F1-style push rod and rocker arm actuated coilover suspension. Both front and rear are variants of double wishbone suspensions, but rather than utilizing a traditional coilover suspension, he uses a dog bone shaped push rod at each corner that connects to a triangular bell crank which pivots around a fixed point on the chassis. One large benefit is the reduction of unsprung mass, which includes everything not supported by the springs. By relocating the shocks and springs inboard of the chassis, horizontal rather than vertical, the unsprung mass halts at the push rod. It sounds complicated and there's a whole lot going on, but with the Aventador's low profile, it frees up a lot of room for the drive axles and allow more air to pass through. The rear is of similar design with the shocks located just after the engine. The chassis dampers were designed with a fixed rate in mind that gave maximum high-speed stability and cornering agility. There's also a hydraulic lifting mechanism up front that will raise the front clip an additional 1.6 inches if needed to clear driveways and speed bumps. And as sleek as the exterior is, the car almost transforms its speeds to give it a much more dynamic look, and best part, it's all functional. The seat pillars feature automated intakes that deploy at certain temperatures to draw in more cool air for the engine. Out back, there's a 68 by 8 inch rear wing that automatically deploys its speed to increase the rear downforce. Across the sides, large 22 by 10 inch hexagonal vents on the fenders work to draw air in for the oil and water coolers, not to mention pass air to the rear brakes. This Aventador features a unique set of gloss black asymmetric Aptek forged aluminum alloy wheels measuring 20 by 9 inches in front and 21 by 12 inches out back. Wrapped in sticky high performance Pirelli P0 Corsa tires measuring 255-30 in front and 355-25 in the rear. Brakes consist of large, four wheel cross drilled carbon ceramics measuring 15.7 by 1.5 inches in front with six piston fixed calipers and 15 by 1.5 inch discs in the rear with four piston fixed calipers. Carbon ceramic brakes provide superior fade resistance compared to traditional discs and are said to last the life of the car. With this setup, it's been tested that the Aventador stops from 60 miles an hour in a very short 108 feet. Overall length is 190.3 inches, with a width excluding the mirrors of 79.9 inches and a height of 44.7 inches. Total dry weight is around 3,472 pounds. So we're going to pop the engine cover and aluminum handle located behind the driver's seat. LP720-4 stands for Longitudinale Posteriore, which means the longitudinal engine is located behind the cabin. The 720 stands for the 720 advertised horsepower and 4 for all-wheel drive. The Aventador carries the 12-cylinder tradition forward with an all-new, all-aluminum, hand-built 6.5-liter dual-overhead cam 60-degree V12. It's normally aspirated and features traditional port fuel injection. Due to packaging and performance concerns, it was decided against going with direct injection at this time, but thanks to the new economy features and weight savings, it makes up for any benefit it may have had. Known internally as the L539, the engine shares nothing with the Murcielago's V12 aside from displacement. It features double overhead camshafts, variable intake and exhaust valve timing with four valves per cylinder. This leads to a lofty compression ratio of 11.8 to 1 and an 8500 RPM redline. In fact, it only weighs 518 pounds and actually improves on the car's center of gravity by being set 3 inches lower into the chassis. With the standard Aventador producing around 690 horsepower, the LP720 would produce around 710 at 8250 RPM and 507 pound-feet of torque at 5500 RPM. This translates to 0 to 60 times of 2.9 seconds, a top speed of 217 miles an hour, and quarter mile times of 10.9 seconds at 133 miles an hour. As far as fuel economy, the Aventador now comes standard with a fuel-saving auto start-stop feature that can be switched on or off at the driver's discretion. It results in a modest 1 miles per gallon improvement. On premium fuel with a 23.8 gallon tank, expect to see around 11 miles to a gallon in the city and 17 on the highway. The doors on the Aventador, like the Diablo and Countach, create such a dramatic visual statement and identity, not only for the car but for the brand. By swinging up and out, it makes ingress and egress nearly effortless in tighter parking spaces. The doors also have a built-in safety pyrotechnic system. In the case of an accident when the car is resting on its roof, small charges are set to blow the bolts off the door so the occupants can climb out to safety. A must-have for this type of system since they don't open like a traditional door. The quality of the Aventador's interior really exemplifies Italian craftsmanship. Comparing previous vehicle offerings it packs the best ergonomics and user-friendly interfaces of any Lamborghini flagship before it. Comfort is also a big step forward. The seats are electrically powered in this particular model with 4-way power lumbar adjustment. 
and the seats no longer feel like hard shells. There's plenty of padding and a good amount of lateral grip. The unique diamond quilted pattern a part of the 50th anniversario with color accent stitching and the bowl embossed on the top of the headrest. As you look through the interior, you'll first notice that pretty much every single panel is wrapped in soft, padded leather with optional color accent stitching. Down below, the threshold is also accented in leather around the door handle, a Venador logos across the threshold plates. The center console on the driver's side also features your CD drive and two SD card inputs. You'll notice as you take a closer look, the dash wrapped out of leather in a multi-tier design with a carbon fiber speedometer binnacle, a part of the interior carbon fiber package. The steering wheel's manual tilt telescoping with a leather accented headliner and the diamond quilted pattern that also matches the rear bulkhead. So let's go ahead and see if she sounds. First, in Strata, or the standard mode. And next, Sport. You can automatically hear it change, like I said earlier. So we're gonna shut her up. Nice solid doors.
Now this Avenidor features the premium Sensonum surround sound system that first made its debut as an option for the 2013 model year, indicated by unique accents on some of the speaker grills as well as the infotainment system. But through a mobile media, navigation, telemetrics interface, all control via this little controller stack in the middle of the center console. Now, if you're familiar with some of Audi's MMI-based technology, you'll catch on to this pretty quickly as the systems are pretty much the same as far as their functionality goes. Leather line visors. As well as a manually dimming rear view mirror. In the top stack here, you have your microphone for your hands free Bluetooth telephone, as well as interior illumination and reading lamps, all LED. Beautiful diamond quilted leather headliner with the yellow accent stitching. Taking a closer look at the MMI system, it's basically set up like a quadrant format, so when you look at the screen, you'll see a different option in each corner. Those corners correspond to the buttons that are sitting around the central controller. You can twist it left and right, push down when you hit a selection and then your different modes between your navigation all the way to your media and radio data are located on each side. Now as far as your main radio screen, standard satellite radio as well as HD radio. Bottom left is tuning, seek scan. Using the dial in the middle, scroll between the options, your preset stations, changing the band, as well as your sound and audio adjustments with various equalizer settings. Right below that is a back button to go back between menus, as well as another sub-selector button if you didn't want to use the twist dial. As far as media options, it's a hard drive based navigation system so you can load up MP3 files, SD card input, as well as CD, located on the driver's side of the dash, as well as auxiliary and mobile media integration like iPod and um, USB devices. Continuing down, here's an integrated directory so you can store information as well as contacts and then your hands-free Bluetooth telephone and automatically ask you to pair it. Your navigation with high-res display and real-time traffic updates, and you can use the wheel to zoom in and out. Hit it again, it'll bring up your destination input, where you can also scroll between your different options. Make your map again on the bottom right, route settings, memory and points of interest, as well as navigation info and repeating commands down below. Navigation is not active. System information vehicle settings and personalizable options, as well as a setup button right here that can go for navigation, radio, or your telephone. So for example, in this screen right here, if we hit setup, it'll bring up your time, display, other detailed settings, as well as your Bluetooth setting. While you're in your navigation, hit setup, it'll bring the navigation setup information that you saw earlier. The center console is all accented in carbon fiber with aluminum accented switch gear on top. Your windows on each side, raising and lowering the front end to clear taller objects and speed bumps, trash control, hazards like you saw earlier, as well as a standard auto start stop feature for saving a little bit of fuel. It'll automatically shut the vehicle off when you stop at a stop sign or a stop light, and when you take your foot off the brake and hit the gas, it automatically reignites and takes off. There's also a standard electronic automatic climate control. It's all controlled, it's in a very clean looking setup right here. Basically, this knob controls everything from the fan speed to the temperature, even the heated seats. So if you select fan speed, for example, it pops up in the screen and then you use the wheel to select your different option. If you press down, it'll bring you back to the temperature. Same goes for the heated seats and for the passenger side. Your different zones, front and rear defrost, as well as automatic mode and recycling. The center console is entirely wrapped in leather with your reverse and manual shifting modes for the transmission and an electronic parking brake like I mentioned earlier. To take it off, just put your foot on the brake, push down to deactivate, or just pull back up to activate. There's a little storage cubby back here, lined in velour, and also a 12 volt power outlet. As far as the steering wheel, your radio controls as well as hands-free telephone and voice commands are located on the steering wheel. Help. Many functions of the MMI can be operated quickly and easily with voice recognition. Voice recognition can be interrupted at any time by pressing the talk button on the steering wheel to enter a command. You can say help or cancel at any time. Press and hold the talk button to cancel voice recognition. 
please choose not cancel. And it's pretty self-explanatory. It'll list out the system commands so you can be a little bit more familiar with it. As far as the gauge cluster, it's a beautiful thin film transistor liquid crystal display with a digitalized tachometer as well as your vehicle data off on each side. In the middle, also display what vehicle drive mode that you're in, whether it's Strata, Sport, or Corsa. You can also control a few of the vehicle's MMI functions from the steering wheel as well using the little mode and selector knob, and it shows up on either side of the speedometer cluster. So, the standard vehicle data with your clock, date, as well as fuel, telephone connection, as well as media options. You have your oil pressure, oil temperature, fuel, as well as vehicle temperature. Wonderful and easy to see. All accented by an aluminum housing with a carbon fiber binnacle and leather trailing off to the back. Alrighty. Good, shut her down. And we'll check out the rest of the vehicle, shall we? Pop the boot up front. Now the Aventador still features supercar-like cargo space. It's around 3.9 cubic feet, which is small at best. It's a two-compartment storage well that extends down to the front fascia. Just enough for a couple of small bags. There is a little bit of illumination off to the left, as well as a 12-volt power outlet, and your cargo cover also stores conveniently in the well. You also have the same power adjustments for the passenger seat that you find on the drivers, including the four-way power lumbar. Padded glove box, this is also lockable, with modest storage, lined in velour, and your iPod auxiliary integration. The Lamborghini Aventador is arguably the wildest looking Lamborghini since the Countach, especially decked out with the 50th Anniversario. With a low slung aerodynamic profile, F1 derived suspension, and a silky smooth V12, it definitely meets supercar status. But with the comfort and convenience not previously known to Lamborghini, it's also the most versatile flagship yet that blends track-ready performance while having superior road comfort. Well everyone, I hope you enjoyed this in-depth look at the 2014 Lamborghini Aventador LP720-4 50th Anniversary. Be sure to stay tuned next time, there's a lot more where that came from. Take care everybody.